Good morning everyone and welcome to another very beautiful mid-autumn morning. It's a Saturday actually and we are back riding the Zontes G155, the horny teenager, the fornication glide and just like any old teenager sometimes it doesn't like getting up in the morning hopefully this is not one of those times now let's see will you cooperate with me this morning come on come on little Zantes oh well there we go Just a little bit of protest and uh, we're on our way. Yeah, sometimes this, bike's ha this bike has uh, a very hard wake up in the morning. It's not indicative of all the models, it's just this one and we cannot figure out why and that's why it is not for sale and it is our bike around the showroom and it has been for the past 7,000 kilometers. Yeah. Sometimes weird, th weird things happen with bikes. We did change everything, so you can leave any suggestions you want down in the comments below. But we did do just about everything. Spark plug, fuel pump, uh, electronic control unit, uh, any kind of sensor you can imagine. And uh, it still does it from time to time, especially when it's chilly outside. And uh, it's actually quite chilly at this moment. I'm kind of regretting being in a t-shirt, but it's gonna warm up and uh, it is gonna be fine Plus it's not that chilly. It's probably like 20 degrees 15 degrees 60 degrees Sun is shining And I gotta get my ass to work because even though this is a Saturday We do still have uh, the showroom open on Saturdays for now later on in the year when the cold actually starts rolling in we're gonna stop having the showroom open in the weekend but for now we still it's still open and uh, this weekend it's my turn to be at the showroom and also i want to do the rest of the 40,000 kilometer service on my little scoot my donny the boys still haven't been able to get out that broken bolt from the head so we can mount the head cover back on but they're gonna do that next week and uh, until then I have the G155 to ride around and also that doesn't stop me from doing the rest of the service so I still have to do uh, the oil changes both in the engine and in the transmission I have to do a, a belt service I have to change the transmission belt and the roller weights and uh, I have to change the air filter and I think that's about it the spark plug and valve check was their job and uh, well it's kind of getting a little bit long in the tooth but they are gonna fix it and until then i can do all all of this other stuff so let's get to the showroom another entrance into the yard another day of working uh, nobody at the entrance usually i say hi to the people at the entrance oh well Let's spark up the little Zantes and uh, let's start to work. It's 9.10. It's actually early. We open at 10 o'clock, so I have 15 minutes to get everything ready and maybe do a little bit of work on Donnie, like get him on the lift. Get the work started and then we're going to finish it after the work day has ended. There we go. That's it. Now that that's done, let's go into the workshop and we're going to use the back door because every once in a while you got to use the back door. It moves really fast.
And here we are, and here's my little Donnie. Here's my little Donnie. Let's get him up on the lift. All right, first thing we're gonna do is loosen the transmission oil bolt so that we can let it drain because this is a very thick oil and it takes a lot of time to drain. There we go. Sometimes they can be quite stubborn. Unfortunately, it's cold and I cannot start it to heat it up, but we're gonna let it drain nice and easy It does look good actually No metal shavings Yeah, transmission oil looks fine And also while that is draining Let's start draining the engine oil so satisfying to do your service but you have to do it correctly and if you're not a trained mechanic because I am not a trained mechanic you have to do it nice and easy or lose your bolt <laughs> I'm gonna have to go fishing for that one uh, where is it brake clean I need brake clean go a little bit of brake clean where is my bolt there it is there is my bolt and take out the spring and take out the metal filter we are gonna clean this with brake clean now normally what you do is you take a bolt your filter especially and you start cleaning it with brake clean because this is the only thing that the Symphony ST has as a filter it's a metal mesh a wire mesh that captures all the metal particles so we have to clean it and then we're gonna reuse it changing it isn't necessary you can do it if you want to they are extremely cheap but it's not necessary Unless you see the wire mesh being damaged and I can't see any damage on this one. So yeah, we're gonna reuse it again. This is the original one, 40,000 kilometers on the scooter. But you know what? Where's my O-ring? Hmm. This should have had an O-ring. And I can't seem to locate it. Okay, that's interesting. There's no ring here. Oh, hello, Mr. O ring. Clean it up a little bit. Put it back where it's supposed to go. There we go. We don't want any oil leaking out. Now another thing that I like to do to get more of the old engine oil out and uh, kids don't try this at home. This is what I do. I do not encourage doing this especially with the scooter on a lift but do not do this. 
if you want to be as dumb as I am, you can just grab the scooter on the center stand and just pull it to one side. And as you can see, more oil starts squirting out of it. Quite a lot more oil. You really have to be careful with the balance here because you can really, really fuck it up. Dropping the scooter from this height ain't gonna be pretty. <clears throat> just hold it like this for a little bit. And just about all the old engine oil is gonna come out of the scooter. That should just about cover it. Now, I'm gonna let this drain. Why I do the tilting thing is because that's not actually where you're supposed to let the oil drain. What you're actually supposed to do is come on the right hand side and undo this bolt. Now, problem is why I don't do this is because this is not the OEM bolt. Because the OEM bolt at one point uh, messed up the threads here. Because this is a very soft metal, the engine case. And you can mess up the threads easily. So honestly, I want to leave it in there and just drain the oil from the filter. That's how I've been doing it for the past over 20,000 kilometers. The engine is running fine and I'm going to continue doing that. This does have a little bit of seepage, but nothing to be alarmed. This is all the seepage in 2,500 kilometers or actually three 3,000 kilometers. So I'm not actually worried. I clean it up a little bit. So uh, two drops of oil every 3,000 kilometers. I'm not worried. I'm not going to undo this. I'm not going to try to tighten it. It's very sensitive. So I'm just going to leave it here. Let's see if this one fits. Yep, perfectly. Good. We're gonna start pouring everything back up. Let's clean the mating surface. You always wanna have the mating surface between the O-ring and the case as clean as possible so you don't get any dirt and start leaking oil. And the way this goes, you have your plug, you have your spring with the small side down, and then you put your filter like this inside. And we jam everything up inside here. It should go in very smoothly and then just compress the spring. Make sure it goes in right. Let's get this out of the way so we don't make a mess. It should tighten just about by hand. Now, be careful with this plug because you don't need to over tighten it and it's not fragile, but you can break it. So once it gets tight, you just give it just a couple of wiggles. One, two, three. That's it. That's good enough. Just to compress the O-ring just a little bit. And then we start adding oil. And in case somebody is asking me what oil have I been using for the past 40,000 kilometers? Well, it's specific sim oil. Nothing special about it. What is important with an air-cooled engine as this one is, always check your oil levels. The way you kill an engine like this is by ha by not having enough oil in it. If it has enough oil, doesn't matter if it's good or if it's high quality or medium quality, if it has enough oil, it will run perfectly for a lot of time. Just have enough. And I'm going to put about 700 mil in it and that should be just fine. Now normally <clears throat> Normally after you fill it up with oil you check you fill it up to maximum then you start the scooter up Let it idle for 10 seconds turn it off and then add a little bit extra more to get the level just right But because I can't start the engine I'm just gonna add 700 mil and once the engine is done completely and I can start it then I'm gonna check for the oil level But for now we're gonna put oil in it because in case I forget and also getting the level is 
just put the dip stick in don't screw it in and yep as you can see it's just maximum so that's enough oil for now once we can start the scooter we're gonna recheck the oil level once after it has run for about i don't know 10 seconds and on the transmission side let's take off the fill plug there we go we should once again have the mating surfaces really really clean so they line up and they made up perfectly and also clean this it does have a metal washer and just screw it in be careful to catch the proper thread there we go it should go in most of the way by hand if it doesn't go in by hand then you're doing it wrong and then just tighten it once again just just hand tight that's good enough and in terms of transmission oil once again I use gear oil high point gear oil which is 85 w140 again sim specific these come in 120 millimeter bottles we need about 170 to go in so it's going to be one of these and half of another one you don't have to be extremely exact with this come on get it all in Then it's empty, and the second one. Second one should be about half. You can pretty much feel it by hand. We're just gonna go halfway. That's it. That's about enough. Yep, that's about half of it left in here and should be enough gear oil. Now we're gonna put the, pl the plug back in here. As you can see, it's just dripping a little bit. And that's about as perfect as it gets. Clean the mating surfaces. Now don't put brake clean inside here because it will thin out the oil very much. So then screwing it by hand. Most of the way by hand and just tighten it with the spanner. Don't over tighten it because it will get warm and it will tighten itself back up. Now we're gonna change out the air filter. We need to take this off filter case I'm gonna clean it up a little bit make sure we don't lose any screws okay and the air filter is right here. What you do with these 125s and 200 sims is that you have to unscrew the air filter from the half, from the filter support. So we take our new air filter, you can see the difference, and we have to unscrew the, these three screws so we can take it out and swap it with a new one.
we throw this one in the bin and we just put the brand new one right here and screw it back in now i'm also going to clean the air filter housing and i'm not going to put the air filter on just yet because i want to take off the transmission cover because we also have to change the belt there we go it's done clean it clean the oil off a little bit and then we just put it to the side because it's gonna have to wait its turn also i'm gonna clean this there we go now get a bit of brick clean and just clean everything up here nice and pretty also you want to take this little hose out because this is where oil that's in that collects in the air filter housing from uh, the breather hoses this is where it collects and you just empty this one out so we need an 8 and a 10 this can go in the bin where's the bin and let's get the transmission housing off Now this will require a bit of persuasion to get off, so a rubber hammer is necessary. There we go. And the transmission cover is off. And now to get this off, 17 mil on both of them and an impact driver. Preferably air powered. Finally. This, is, this wasn't set up to maximum. And now before we tighten it, I have to set it to the number two setting. You don't have to over tighten these. And now we can take out the variator very gently and we good splines look good variator isn't warm get the belt off and get the belt housing off the clutch looks good and slide it on out beautiful as you can see the belt is kind of worn and you can see i think you can notice cracking here that means this belt was on its way out still would have held for another couple of thousand kilometers no problem but we're gonna swap it out for a brand new belt and now that we got the, the variator off we can look at the bolt we can clean them up Let's take this off. We're gonna clean them up. There's a lot of like rust in here. Okay, that should be fine. The roller weights could still be used. <laughs> now, what you have to remember, these roller weights, here they are thinner and here there's more plastic. This plastic goes in the direction that the variator spins. So as the variator spins, like, let me hold these in, like this, that means, so as it's spinning like this, it's pushing on this plastic part of the roller weight. That's the proper way to install them. So as I look at it now, the plastic part should be on the left side. Let's take off all these old weights. And we're gonna give the variator a bit of a clean. This also needs to be clean. 
it is recommended to clean the bell housing for the clutch. Another important thing to do before we put the brand new roller weights in is, so we're supposed to put them like this with the plastic side to the left, but we are going to grease them up. Not a lot of grease, basically just a little grease. Grease them up a little bit and get them in nice and seated one by one. I know some people would say I should wear gloves, but I really like working on my bike with my hands, even though it takes two days to get all this grime off my hands, but yeah, it works for me. No, it's satisfying. It's so satisfying to feel, feel everything with your fingers. Get all in there, man. I don't care how slimy it is. It's just so nice to just get up in there and feel everything, every single bit of texture. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, greasing roller weights. Yeah, you should definitely grease your roller weights. Nice and easy, get it centered. Everything should go in nicely with no force absolutely everything if you have to force it you're doing something wrong now let's put all of this back together all right peeps now this is where i want everyone to pay super close attention Forty thousand kilometers of drive cleaned off beautifully now, in case you're worried about getting dirty, don't do this job. You are going to get dirty. Especially if you want to clean it properly. Now, when I say clean it properly, I mean clean it decently. If I want to clean this properly, I'm going to go through, I don't know, hundreds of cans of brick cleaning. And you don't need to get it that good. We'll just say we're going to get it good enough to you. Okay, that's, that's good enough. We are going to get our variator nicely seated here with the dowel pin all the way in. Secondly, we are going to take our brand new belt and put it First of all, on the clutch. We're just gonna put it like this. Let's look for which way is it supposed to spin. Hmm. Doesn't have any markings. Which way is it supposed to spin? I'm guessing something like this. Yeah, that should be just right. Now we put the clutch. Set the clutch here. Align it properly so it goes in. Once again, it's supposed to go in very, very easily. Yep, just going in. Get the belt snug, the clutch. It's not grabbing anywhere. There we go, clutch is in. Now, get the belt right here over the dowel pin. It takes a bit of force. We'll have to manhandle it a little bit. But get it over the pin. Now we can put this back on. We can, yep, we can put this back on. Get it on the splines. And tighten this up a little bit by hand. All right, so now this is tightened by hand. The belt is sitting just about on the variator. It's very tight, so it doesn't sit on the variator properly. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this, actually we can't. We need to get it properly seated inside the clutch. So just pull on it, turn it around, 
get it in there and get it nice and over. Okay, now it should be good. We're gonna go, we're gonna put this plate back on. careful with the splines. There we go, it's going in. It's nice and in. Now this is the most important part. We put the screw here, we put the bolt in, and we tighten it by hand as tight as it gets. Now, we're going to tighten this one up, but only this one. <coughs> so, set at number two. Hold it. All right, that's tight. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your belt and wiggle it a couple of times, and then squeeze it to get it nice and in the clutch. And now we can tighten this a little bit more by hand and just turn it around and we can tighten it a little bit more by hand and we keep doing this and turn it around and tighten it more by hand and tighten it more and get it in more Get it. You have to do this a couple of times so you can get it, get this bolt as tight as you possibly can by hand before you put the impact. That's how you get your belt properly seated on a variator. You don't just put it here and you tighten it. Spin it around, tighten it a little bit more. Tighten it a little bit more. Every time you do this, it goes, it tightens a little bit more. See? I went about two full turns just by hand, just by doing this to the belt. All right, now that we can, we are firmly, it's as tight as it will go by hand. Now we can put the impact. And now that's tight. Now we have a brand new transmission belt with some brand new roller weights. Now don't ask yourself why uh, I can't spin the engine so free. The spark plug is in it, so it has no compression. That's okay. All right, now we can start putting everything back together. Okay, I'm gonna get the old gasket off the transmission cover. Get this out of the way. Because I have a brand new gasket waiting to go in. You can reuse this gasket, but this has been on here for, I don't know. I think this is just the second gasket. And uh, I wanted to Put a new one on. So now that the old gas is, gasket is scraped and we have a new one, I really want to find a way how to make this one stick here because this, this ain't happy. I think what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of Vaseline and just put on here a couple of points. So the gasket has something to stick to. There we go. Now the gasket has glued itself to the case. Let's see if we can get it, if we can get the case on proper. Now you don't have to go all out on tightening these, just tight enough because they just hold the transmission cover on, which is basically just a dust cover. 
the scooter will run just fine without a transmission cover. Where's the, huh, where's the other one? And then we can put our air filter back on and close up the air filter housing. And we should be done with the service. Nice and tight. Check this one because they have they are prone to. There we go. These ones they are prone to coming undone. Now these are screws that go into plastic, so don't over tighten them. Just hand tight. That's that's all it takes. And that is just about it. For now, this is all I'm gonna do to it. So we got new oil in the transmission, we got new engine oil, we got a brand new belt and rollers, a brand new air filter. We are going to get a new spark plug. The old one looked a little bit worn, but actually the color of it, it's absolutely perfect. That means the mixture is just right. The boys are still working on this bolt right here, which got stuck in the head. So yeah, that's still a thing, but it's gonna get done. For now, I did the rest of the service, which was the engine oil, transmission oil, air filter, and uh, transmission belt and rollers. Hope you guys learned a couple of things on how you do all of these on a scooter. I did go into quite a lot of detail, and this is all information I got from trained mechanics, uh, sitting here just watching them and them explaining to me how it's done. It seems easy, but you have to take care with the proper steps. If you don't put the belt on, as I showed you, seat it properly on the variator, you will break the belt prematurely. And then you're going to have a bad time. So yeah, do it properly, do it right, take your time, don't hurry. And it's not that difficult to do. Plus, get the proper tools, like for the variator and the clutch, you need an impact drill. Otherwise, you need a special key to hold it in place as you try to unscrew it. But an impact is, is the way to go. But yeah, hopefully that was uh, interesting. Hopefully that was educational. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm gonna get Donnie off the lift and then take the Zontis back home because he's still not roadworthy yet, but he's gonna be. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, take care out there and ride safe. Bye.